Yes. Okay. Map 062.0, parcel 0046, north end of a mass, 01845, in the R1 zoning district. The applicant is requesting a variance pursuant to town of north end of a zoning bylaw, section 195-4, B3A, for construction of an in-ground pool in the R1 zoning district. A variance is requested under section 195-4.19B, 3A Watership Protection District Non Discharge Buffer Zoning of the Zoning Bylaws. Application and supporting materials are available for review at the Office of the Zoning Department, located at 120 Main Street, North End of Mass, on Monday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, from the hours of 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., Tuesday, from the hours of 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m., and Friday, from the hours of 8 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. The Order of the Board of Appeals, D. Paul Cock, Jr., Esquire, Chairman. Thank you for that very dramatic reading, Mr. Cushing. Okay, thank you. Uh, and with that, this uh, this uh, uh, hearing has been opened. If you would just uh, your name and address for the record. Sure. Uh, good evening. My name is Greg Hockmuth. I work at uh, Williams and Sparagis. We have an office in Middleton, and I'm here representing the applicants Maria and Anthony DeMarco for the zoning variance. Um, applied for their property at 62 Excuse sale. Well, do you have a signed paper from them that you can represent them? I do. That was um, that was submitted. Back in the yep. Is it in the package? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, so Anthony and Maria DeMarco, they purchased a property at 62 Sale Way. Uh, does everybody know where Sale Way is? It's right yeah. after the country club, right? That's right. Uh, it's, it's not that old. I think it was the early 90s when the subdivision was developed. This is the second to last house on the left as you head down towards the cul-de-sac. It's not on the water, but it's well within the watershed uh, district. Uh, what the DeMarcos would like to do is to construct an in-ground swimming pool in their rear yard. Um, as you know, uh, there's, there's certain offsets from the lake itself and from uh, the wetlands within the watershed. Um, the pool is proposed outside of the non-discharge zone from the lake itself, uh, but it is proposed within the non-discharge zone from a small wetland that exists in the front of the property off, off Sail Way. Uh, there's no location on the lot that would allow a swimming pool to go in that would um, not require a variance because the entire property is within one of the zones from from the lake and or the the wetland out front well, what is the, the required offset from the wetland so we're, we're not within 100 feet of the wetlands uh, so we don't require a permit through the conservation commission sure but we do require a watershed uh, special permit because we're in the non-discharge zone right but how wide is that non-discharge zone so it, it, it goes or? out to 400 feet. Okay. So from the wetland itself, it's, it's between uh, 150 feet and 400 feet is the non-discharge zone. Can gotcha. you just show us where it is on it? I can. Yep. So this light blue line is the non-disturbance uh, zone from the wetland. Uh, the non-discharge zone is, is out here. It falls on the abutters property. So we're within that 150 and in 400 foot zone, we're, we're almost 200 feet from the wetland itself. It's 196 feet. Uh, when we first- uh, Where is it from the lake? The so the, the 400 foot zone from the lake is here. So we've got about 35 plus feet to, to play with. Um, when we first uh, were approached by the clients, I reached out to Gene Enright down at the planning department. And I talked to Gene about the permitting path that would be required. That's what we learned of the need for a zoning variance as well. Any new structure within the uh, watershed district requires a variance from this, from this board. Um, Gene had uh, turned me on to a project that was approved in 2017 on Great Pond Road, which was very similar, except they were tearing down an old house, building a new house, as well as a swimming pool. We wanted to propose everything that they did as far as mitigation for increase in impervious, uh, provide some stormwater management. Uh, the prior project requested, uh, well, proposed an infiltration trench around the perimeter of the pool patio, uh, which is what we've done. Uh, the existing impervious surface from the rooftop of the house uh, goes into a subsurface infiltration system, which is located here. 
Um, that's why we had to position the pool slightly where you see it. They originally wanted it here, but there's a, currently a stormwater management area there for the roof. The infiltration trench would be pro proposed around the perimeter of the pool. It'd be a two foot deep trench filled with stone and the soils out here are moderately well drained. Um, so it should be more than, more than sufficient to handle uh, most storm events and get the water back into the ground. Uh, there is a non-backwash filtration system proposed for the pool, so it would be a cartridge filter. So there'd be no need to backwash towards wetland resource areas or, um, you know, I guess the threat of any backwash reaching the lake itself would be eliminated as a result of that. Now, I, I assume that by non-discharge zone, the, the concern for a swimming pool would be chlorinated water, right? Is that the idea that that would come into the, into the wetland? So the, the pool itself is permitted within the non-discharge zone, okay. as well as single-family houses as far as the planning board's concerned. But when you go back and forth through the regulations, it, it takes you back to that section that says any new structure requires a variance. Okay. But the non-discharge zone, I think it was really intended for transfer stations, uh, you know, large types of uses that would provide a lot more uh, potential contaminants than an in-ground swimming pool in the back of, of somebody's yard. Um, in, in a similar vein, just to get a handle on the procedural stuff here, <clears throat> so the use I'm hearing, what I'm hearing you say is that the use of a swimming pool is pretty much as of right in the zone. You just right. have to get a variance for any new structure, and then I heard you earlier say that you're going to need a special permit, and the special permit is for what and from whom? So it's a watershed special permit from the planning board. Uh, which we've applied for and we're going uh, July 16th. We wanted to come before the zoning board first before uh, going bef before the planning board. So the variance is for what? Because you were in water being of that wetland? Uh, so the variance is just for a new structure within the non-discharge zone of, of uh, wetland. the wetland. Okay. So if you were building a shed, we would be doing the same thing? If yes. If it was bigger than 8 by 10. <laughs> That's okay. right. That's right. It's it's. Um, and you have to realize too on here, it's a lot of the patio as well is considered the structure. Because it's impermeable surface. Correct. Right. And that regulation that defines structure is very clear. It includes swimming pools, and it says not limited to, and it lists a bunch of different types of structures. Uh, it's my understanding that it wasn't. Um, it wasn't something that was looked at as closely in the past but the building department is now looking at this as they should because the regulation is very clear um, and it is considered a structure for the time being anyways. Um, it's not a very large pool. It's, it's a small kidney-shaped pool. We've tried to tuck it in such that most of the trees are going to stay. The, I colored all the trees up just so you could see how wooded it is. Um, and the entire front yard is woods, too. It's a very modest-sized backyard, a thin strip of grass in the front. It's a gigantic house, uh, but the pool itself is, is rather small. So I'm looking at the order conditions from the original um, development. Is there anything that restricts swimming pools? No. Because it just, it's, it's sites it, but it doesn't t give me a list of uh, conditions. Yeah, there were some covenants in the subdivision that uh, prohibited above-ground swimming pools and a lot of the standard... Uh, fence? Yeah. Yeah, there's a fence there's a fence proposed around the pool, but we're going to be able to weave it in and out of the, the trees, and there's no proposal to deforest the backyard. And I mean, you have to, by law, fence the pool anyways. Yep. Yeah, and there is a fence. We're, we're going to use probably 70% of the fence that's there and then just kick it out in the back to go around the swimming pool if it is approved. Do the regulations say anything about the um, uh, construction methods and, you know, having stockpiles of excavated soil and erosion control and that sort of thing? They don't. Um, and so there, I should say there's really no potential for any erosion or sedimentation into the adjacent resource areas or the lake. Uh, the pool's proposed in a little bit of a low spot in the backyard, uh, but there will be the need to create a temporary access road and a temporary stockpile area um, for, the, for the pool excavation. So the, you have a, um, 
You mentioned the trench, and it has an operation and maintenance plan that um, that requires the infiltration trench to be inspected and cleaned every six months after and after every major storm event of half an inch or more. Right. So that's that's an intense plan. I mean, you know, that's something that's gonna you know require a lot of vigilance on the homeowner's part. Um, how? You know, how do we ensure that that is that is adhered to? I mean, that is is there. I mean, is it obvious with the trench when that is not being followed? Like, you know, in terms of if there's too much rainwater, like, is it become basically unpleasant for them to have so that they would want to do that? Or like, how does this? I guess my worry is is that they that they would build this trench and then not maintain it the way that it's supposed to be done. And I don't know if there's any way to there's not going to be any easy way to enforce it. I'm certainly not going to go into their backyard and and call them out on it. Right. So so good question. Um, the language in our O and M was taken right from uh, TEC consultants uh, peer review letter for the project that was on Great Pond Road. It was what the planning board wanted to see. So we included the same language. It's a little aggressive for an infiltration trench around a swimming pool. Sure. Um, with these infiltration trenches, it's really easy to tell when they're not working. You okay. get water ponding on top of the filter. So there's a layer of filter fabric on top of the stone that you don't yeah. see. Okay. Then there's a decorative stone typically placed on top. Okay. And if you start getting ponding or puddling within the trench itself, and it's okay. only a foot wide, yeah, yeah. it tells you that it's, it's probably clogged with pine needles, leaves, or some type of bark mulch or landscape debris. You simply rake off the decorative stone, remove the sediment, and then put everything back. It's okay. very easy to maintain. Um, but water is going to seek its own path, right? And it's flat. Sure. So if you do have one section that fails, it's just going to go along until it infiltrates. Okay. Uh, the soils out here are great. The fact that there's a subsurface infiltration system right next to this, it's going to be a lot lower. It's working fine. It tells us that this trench is going to work, work well. But to your point, how do you police it? It's a good question. Yeah. I mean, I would think the homeowners would not want their property to. Well, it, the yeah. flooding it helps, right? In right. that sense, is that it makes it like unpleasant enough that they're going to want to self-maintain. They're putting in this beautiful pool and all this landscaping. And right. You don't want you want to protect your investment. You have to have faith in a homeowner that they're going to want to protect their investment. Mm -hmm. Right, and to be honest, without the trench, I suspect sheet flow off that patio would have plenty of time to infiltrate through that lawn before even getting close to any of the adjacent resource areas and certainly the pond. The pond's well over 400 feet away. Um, and, and there is a developed property down here that's actually on the pond, um, and the grade rises up before you get to that, that property. Lake, that's right. <laughs> so if they have to pump the water down in the pool, uh, where do they discharge that to? So I think it would be appropriate to include a condition, if this is approved, that does not allow any type of dewatering from the pool or emptying of the, of the pool uh, via any type of sump pump across the property. Typically, it's either pumped into a truck or sometimes it's pumped out into the road where it gets into the stormwater management system after it's had plenty of time to uh, allow the chemicals to, to dissipate. It doesn't take long for chlorine to, to um, leave a swimming pool. So this is going to be chlorine, correct? Is that? I'm not sure. I mean, today's environment, it seems like salt seems to be more prevalent than chlorine. Chlorine seems, I mean, so that's. That's why I asked, are they going chlorine? But then secondly, uh, <clears throat> if you look at just the rain that we've had and you have a pool, you need to reduce the water level within your pool because the rain has created that environment. So this, quote, discharge, is, it's going to happen. It's going to need to happen. Um, and I would question whether going to the street or I mean I usually the equipment has a device that allows the water to be backwashed out of the pool into some area so I'm as I <clears throat> I think is it chlorine and <clears throat> does the equipment allow 
for the discharge of the of uh, the water in the pool when if it's too high from rain or a storm. So, so I'm sorry. So I don't think our bylaws restrict the kind of chemicals that can go into a pool or not or a structure. I don't. I know sometimes they restrict uh, what kind of lawn. Um, Pesticides, pesticides and all that, but right. I don't think the restrictions of, and, and I understand nope. where you're coming from, but nope. I don't think our bylaw, I don't think as a board, yeah. we can restrict, you can only. Well, I think, I think that there's a difference, and I, I just bring it up because right. of the, if we're going to be, if we're talking about discharging water, there's probably a difference between saline and chlorine, and that's why, I, that's why, I mean, so it would be. I think to Steve's point, you know, this property, the, the, the limit of the non-discharge zone is 400 feet. Mm -hmm. They're asking for the pool to be at 200 feet. I think it is reasonable to say that if we are going to permit a variance to allow it to be much closer to a wetland, that we ask for extra protections, which is, of course, why he has suggested a trench, right? Like, that's, that's the whole reason, because if this was outside the discharge zone, something like that trench would not be required. And... Um, so I think Steve's asking if similarly we want to talk about what is used in the pool as a way to mitigate the fact that it's closer to the wetland than would normally be allowed. I think I'd be comfortable with if you cannot drain and sump pump, you know, and all that. I, I, did, I, I have a hard time restricting a homeowner to say you can't, you know, um, make your pool pretty, but, you know, mm -hmm. make it nice and blue and, and sparkly by putting just salt or, oh, yeah. I mean, because I'm, I'm not versed in what goes in a pool and what doesn't. Do, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? Yep. I don't know if yep. no, anyone else's pool it is. I think it's a question of how you discharge it, depending Correct. on the center. Yeah, I, I think that exactly. that's, yeah. that was, uh, my comments are related to, I heard you talk about discharging, you, you gave two examples, discharging into the road, and you mentioned another method, which to me, doesn't seem very doesn't seem practical for the pool owner. It's and only practical if you're dewatering the whole pool to patch a leak or fix a crack, and you want to return the water within the next couple of days. Um, you've probably seen those water for in rent Middleton. trucks driving around. <laughs> H two O in Middleton. <laughs> you know, a lot of people will uh, they won't want to fill up their pool using their spigot or well uh, because it's very costly. Right. Um, so a lot of times they will dewater an entire pool into a truck. But if you're just taking off an inch or two from a recent downpour, no, they wouldn't pump it into a truck. But what we have done in the past is propose dry wells next to pools to discharge any type of backwash into a dry well. And we just happen to have a pretty good size infiltration area right next to this for the rooftop. So it would be easy enough just to put another port into that to allow um, the property owners to <laughs> dewater if need be, to take it off an inch or two, whatever it is, and just pump it into the infiltration area that's next to the pool. So is, is there to be a tank that you can then pour some of the water into back and forth? Uh, no, it would just be, so there's a, it's, it's, you've probably seen those half, half moon, uh, large black uh, plastic, um, chambers mm -hmm. that go underneath parking lots and whatnot for stormwater. Okay. They're called infiltrator chambers um, or Caltech chambers. Those exist right next to this proposed swimming pool. Uh, so there'd be, there'd be plenty of room to throw an inch of water into that. You know, I looked at my pool this morning, and I, I know I have to take a little water out of it, but we, we just got an inch of rain last night. Yeah. Uh, but no, I don't know what type of chemicals they're putting in here, but if it's chlorine, if it's salt, uh, whatever it is, it would be safe to pump that into a dry well, or in this case, the subsurface infiltration system next to the pool. There's a storm, storm drain out in the road? Uh, yeah. It looks like, looked like country drainage to me, so it probably wouldn't be appropriate just to let water sheet flow out into sail way. Not to mention, it's a very long way from the pool out to the road here. It's a long, meandering driveway. Yeah, I, I, I think I'd be more comfortable with, with having that dry well be a, be a way to pump back and forth. Yep, it's easy enough to put another port, just a piece of PVC going into the ground. And it's something they probably want to do anyways, rather than trying to pump it onto their lawn.
so this is supposed to be a variance, and my you know understanding is that with that, it's supposed to be you know we're, we're providing an exception usually for some kind of hardship that you have that is specific to the property, you know, that is specific to the uh, location or proportions of the property. Um, what is that in this case? I mean, I, I know you said that you would not be able to put a pool inside your property within the rules, but I'm not sure that that is the kind of hardship we're looking for. Well, that, that is the hardship in this case. There's okay. nowhere on the lot that we could propose a swimming pool that would um, not require a variance. And the watershed around Lake Chickwick is fairly large, as mm -hmm. you know. Um, and to prohibit swimming pools within that watershed, um, I think would be a challenge. And not to mention, it's it was just it was just done last year. Mm -hmm. um, I guess you know, impact-wise, the lake, the wetlands, a swimming pool in the backyard. It should have zero impact on the adjacent resource areas and certainly the lake. Is this the material used in building the pool? Uh, it's going to be uh, gunite, and the patio is proposed to be bluestone or some type of paver surface, uh, which, you know, people say it's permeable, but it's, it's more close to pavement, in my opinion. Water doesn't typically go through pavers, which we have the trench around it. Anything else? <clears throat> I mean, how about yourself? Any, I, I think the hot bench might have interrupted the presentation. Is too, anything else to, uh, to add? <laughs> uh, no, not unless uh, the board has uh, any more questions for me. I think I'll probably just uh, explore the, um, the the conditions that were uh, kind of you know explored a little bit earlier. <clears throat> um, I I think one of the things I heard you say is that it would not be unreasonable to impose a condition regarding the dewatering of it, and I'm, I'm not sure exactly how to write something like that. Like the 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 condition, would, uh, you know, because I am a layperson, in spite of being on the zoning board, I mean, I would write something like no no. Uh, dewatering discharge on on site that it all must be we're not talking about the minor discharges for you know the the intervening kind of thing I'm talking about the uh, the entirety of the pool that you had mentioned that scale mm -hmm. <clears throat> what's the what's the the right way the clearest way to write that so in the past I've seen conditions uh, for situations like this that um, uh, that read uh, you know prior to any discharge of pool water uh, from the pool itself, the pool shall be allowed to sit for at least 72 hours to ensure chemicals within the pool are diluted. And in this case, you could also impose a condition or a requirement to uh, dewater or, um, yeah, dewater from the pool into the existing subsurface infiltration system for the rooftop or a separate drywall if they decided to put in a separate drywall. I mean, that's a, that's a worthwhile question there. So um, the the system that is there, it, what is its size compared to what's required for the size of the roof that's next to it? So it doesn't store water. Okay. It's designed to capture water and allow it to infiltrate into the ground. Okay. And unless you were trying to dewater the pool at the same time the roof was dumping into it, right. it shouldn't be an issue. Okay. If it was a subsurface detention area, Right. then we'd have to make sure it was sized appropriately. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And I, 
I'm guessing that the planning board's going to have some similar conditions in their decision. And I did hear from Monica today. She told me uh, engineering is going to be reviewing this uh, and providing input as well. So they'll review the trench and the design. And so now what happens if um, their conditions overlap with our conditions? I mean, you're going to have to come back to one of us. So hopefully right. they're cohesive with um, your conditions you want for both boards to decide? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm guessing that they're going to be a lot more conditions from the planning board. Correct. But it's specifically these two. I mean, our concern is the watershed. You're in there. You're asking for this. So, I mean, I'm sure they're going to say, okay, X, Y, Z, A, B, C, B, 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 A, and, you know. Mm -hmm. So. Just trying to think how to word it. So it's. Another board, and, mm. <laughs> and it saves them from having to come back. I mean, if, if we were closer to the lake or closer to the wetland or in the no, dis no disturb zone or the conservation zone, I think it would be it would be a lot more it would be a lot more um, challenging to propose a swimming pool. We're on the outskirts of the non-discharge zone in a hollow behind the lot. Um, the reality is water isn't going to reach the lake. Wait, it's the not going to reach. In. <laughs> the, whole the house is there. It's, it would have, whole water would have to flow uphill to get to this wetland. This is a, a mm. question that may not be answerable by anybody in the room, but do we, I, I, before this meeting, I had looked up the no, idea of a non-discharge zone because I had never particularly heard of it seems to be pretty unique to our bylaws. Like, I tried to look around. I've not seen other places that had similar ones. There's the, the non-disturbed zone that goes out two, goes out either 100 or 200 feet is, is common for a lot of municipalities. But I've not seen it, this specific language of a non-discharge zone that's much larger. It's very specific to North Andover because that is our drinking water. So okay. they're very, very gotcha. conservative with bodies gotcha. of water so it's, it's really because of Lake Cochewick that Correct. all of this involved rule exists. Okay, that makes sense. Which is our source of... Well, of course, yes. yes. No, that's no. my take on it. I don't know if there's that, if that's the accurate answer, but I would think I would probably be 98% sure. So does it only apply to uh, wetlands that are within the, I guess, watershed district? All very, versus, very restrictive. Versus, in, a wet, versus a wetland that's correct. outside the watershed district. Okay. Or if there's a newt or a frog, that's different too. Some turtles. Uh, oh, turtles. Oh my God, there was a huge turtle on the road the other day. Did you squish it? So I have the prohibited uses, okay. which I can read to you. Sure. Um, construction of any septic system, yep. construction of any new permanent structure, or expansion of an existing structure, except as allowed by special permit, which is why we have to go for the watershed special permit. And then the big one, the use, of, the use of or method of application of any lawn care or garden product, fertilizer, pesticide, herbicide, that may contribute to the degradation of the public water supply. Um, and then underneath that it says the use of lawn care or garden products that are not organic or slow release nitrogen. So I think they're worried about the phosphates and all the bad stuff that's in fertilizers. Uh, But you can't put fish guts on your lawn. And that's what they use for organic fertilizer. Just an FYI. It's the technical term, fish guts. <laughs> chum, chum. Chum. So just to, to read it, uh, so your conditions would be prior to any major discharge, pool to sit up to 72 hours to ensure I couldn't write quick enough. Dilution chemicals. Dilution. Di yeah, dilution or dissipation? Is Which the, one? Because it's not going to dilute by sitting. It's going to degrade. Right? Is what that, did you say? I, I think either one would be appropriate. Yeah, I, yeah, I would say degradation of chemicals. Oh, and that's the third word now. The, 
Yeah, no, I, well, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm trying to be. I'm trying to be Actually, a chemist no, that's here. That's not true because if you don't chlorine, if you don't put chlorine in a pool, it ends up turning green. So the chlorine does go away eventually. Right, it evaporates. It, Very it either, de- it either oh. degrades or evaporates off, but it doesn't dilute. Dilute would imply that more water comes in for the same amount of chlorine that is already there. It dissipates. There you go. It dissipates. Learn something new every day. Of chemicals and to be taken off site. I think we clarified that. Um, for for major dewater. Major, oh, major dewater. The, the idea was Prior to any be, major discharge, pool to sit after 72 hours to ensure dissipate um, dissipation. Is that a word? Dissipation. Dissipation. Yep. Of sewage. Of chemicals in to be taken in water to be taken off site or. Wait, if you're waiting for it to dissipate, then you don't, why do you need it to still be taken off site? The chemicals have to dissipate, and then. Right, but then why does that water have to be taken off site? It's still a lot of water to dump into the soil. Okay. Okay. I have no problem with it going on site. A gunite pool isn't going to need to be drained, but okay. Crack. Except when it needs to be drained. Yeah, they won't have, they won't have to deal with it. Paint it. Some people paint them. Okay. Well, when it comes winter time, they two a third, two thirds of the water is going to be dropped down. They're not going to leave the pool full in the winter time. Yeah. Is that what they going to be? No, you don't drop it two thirds. You drop it below the skimmers to push out the skimmers. It depends upon where the pipes are. I mean, so probably half the pool will go go out. It, it all depends upon where the where the you have to get the water below where the skimmer. So all of the the jets in the skimmer. Yeah, and so so you're gonna. That's a, bottom line. It's it's a material amount of water. Mm. I would say it's enough. It's not an, It's not so much that it can't be put into the infiltration system, but that's. I mean, based off of most pools where you're looking at your skimmers and your drainer. You need to go below that so that they can push out the water from the pipes, blow out the pipes so that there's no water in so they don't crack during the winter. That's as much as you're going. And it's not a huge pool, so you're not going to have skimmers 10 feet deep. And typically at the end of the season, too, you stop treating the pool, you lower the water, and then once the water's lowered, then you throw in some chemicals to winterize it. Yeah. So it would be essentially clean water at that point. Especially if a condition requires it to be. And what was the other one? The second one? The water of any minor. I can't read your writing. To put into a a, um, minor discharge into the existing subsurface. To existing infiltration, so whichever detention. Um, Subsurface infiltration. Existing subsurface infiltration. Or a newly installed drywall. Which one do we want? Well, can't you give them an option? Different. Give you more more yeah, home. Newly installed what? Drywall. Drywell. Okay. You're just exhibiting your flexibility to the homeowner in this very restrictive environment. So flexible. <clears throat> yeah. Any further thoughts, questions from the board? Hearing any? I make a motion to close the public hearing. A motion made. Is there a second? second. Motion made and seconded. So the public hearing element uh, is closed. Now the board shall deliberate. Thoughts from the board prior to a motion. I think the two conditions are reasonable. I don't think you really need much more. I haven't heard anyone on the board, uh, you know, sc- screaming and yelling um, about this. Invasion into the non-discharge zone. Certainly, don't have anybody from the uh, gallery kicking <laughs> and screaming, and I have not heard from Gene suggesting as much. So, if the experts are the persons more expert than myself, uh, aren't kicking and screaming, then um, you know, based on the reasonableness of uh, Mr. I'm sorry, Hockmuth or Hockmuth? Hockmuth. Yep. Mr. Hockmuth's presentation. <clears throat> the thoroughness of his, his research and the adoption of previously imposed conditions certainly satisfies the needs that I have to manage this project. I, I think, you know, my, my only um, 
my only slight concern really at this point is just whether you know whether or not this qualifies as, as a variance. I think I'd be much more comfortable if it were a special permit in the sense that like I don't see anything particularly unusual about the shape or distribution of the property. And so it's but it's very clearly within the zone that you're not supposed to be building things. So like I don't know I don't know quite what I think about that. I in every other respect I I'm pretty happy with the the changes that have you know the not changes the um, the conditions that have been proposed I think they are good ones I think they make sense and and I think for the most part like I'm not super worried about the water quality I'll be interested to hear what the engineers say when when they present that to the planning board but um, but we don't have that right now but um, but that's my only my only real concern but a, a variance is three conditions. It's soil, shape, and topography. So yeah. the soil, I mean, could also be restricted because it's wet. Yeah. The shape, it's um, a donut, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Soil, it's all, you know, so, and I think we're restricted because we're saying we don't get to choose. Well, we're going to, you know what, we're going to give you a special permit instead because we like that in, instead. We're, we're bound to the bylaws to say there he's here because he's requesting the right no I, because of bylaw. I'm with you and that's why but, like I, I have a little bit of a hesitation there is I just don't under those three conditions I don't know how this property fits in that rubric well har hardship is a little bit so soil shape topography is generally the it's just like the rules on lexicon it's the shorthand yeah. that, that we all use because it certainly covers 98 percent of the the perspective hardships yeah but the legal realities are is that it's it's a little bit bigger than merely soil shape topography. Sure. Certainly, the restrictions that the town has put on the you know that the zoning code has put on the land, and there are certainly cases where in, you know financial hardship is something that can qualify you know with with other uh, in, with other um, variables, I guess. So I hear you loud and clear. This doesn't necessarily fit into soil shape topography as we ordinarily think about it. Yeah. But in the overlay of the zoning code and and. That there being that other two percent of prospective hardships, yeah, this lands in, in a hardship category. Um, but, you know, reasonable people can certainly disagree on whether or not that is um, that is one that everybody should agree on. Um, but that's yeah. where where I'm coming from on that. I hear you loud and clear, though, Michael. <clears throat> Great. Uh, since no more discussion, I'll make a variance. I mean, I'll make a, a motion and a variance, too. <laughs> I'm going to make a motion to grant a variance under Section 195-4.19B3A in the Watershed Prote Protection District no Non-Discharge Buffer Zone of the Zoning, zoning Bylaws for the property located of um, at Maria and Anthony DeMarco for property at 62 Sill Way, map 062.0, parcel 0046, North Andover, Mass, 01845 in the R1 zoning district. To grant, I'm sorry, to grant the variance, and I'm going to cite um, a, letter, a packet from May 16th, 2019, that shows all the deed um, restrictions and, yep, that. And a plan dated uh, Andrew's pool of the plan of the pool. I'm sorry for um, Demarco residents by Andrew's pool, page number one. Site plan by William Spriggs. Am I selling, saying it right? I said it wrong. Right? Sparages. Sparages. I see it all Everyone the time, says it and wrong. I say it wrong. Um, Property uh, dated, I have my glasses on too, but maybe I should open it up, 5-15-2019. And a bigger site plan for people who can't see, like me, dated 5-15-2019, which I'm assuming is the same plan, but just bigger. That's right. To grant that variance, sorry. Can I second the motion? Oh, I'm sorry, there's conditions. Slow your roll. <laughs> Under the two conditions of one, Of which one? Which the O&M, Operation Maintenance Plan. Oh, we want to put that in there? Okay. It just has a third condition. I don't remember. Or just, first, depending on your So O-M-A, O-M, what? O and M. O and M. It'll be, it'll be written out in the decision, I promise you. Okay. 
So uh, the first condition um, being no major discharge, but prior to any major discharge, pool to sit up to 72 hours to ensure the dissipation of chemicals. Condition number two, dewater of any minor discharge to existing subsurface infiltration or new installed dry well. And condition number three, O&M. What am I going to say? Just say to the O&M, conditions of the O&M? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, that's good. Yeah. The, the, the applicant shall follow the O&M as, as proposed. So the in the condition number three, the applicant should follow the O&M as proposed. <clears throat> proposed. Motion made. Is there a second? I second it. No seconds. We'll go down the line. Mr. Kusha? Yes. Ms. McIntyre? Yes. Andrea? Yes. Mr. Michael? Yes. And I'll be a yes as well. So that's, as Simon says, five yeses. And that's, that's how you get a, you'll get a decision. Valerie, I'm sure you know Valerie well. Yep. She'll, I'm sure, follow up with more paperwork questions. We don't do mylars anymore, right? Nope. Nope. So that makes life a little easier. We did bring one down. Do you want us to sign it just in case? Um, no, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to sign it because I believe she in actually has it. Oh. Okay, has it. Brilliant, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming tonight. Appreciate Thank you. It. Sorry we dragged you out for this one hearing. That's send you the bill. That's <laughs> it. Is our job. The last item on the agenda, everybody, is just a chapter letter, uh, dated April 30, 2019. There is no action required of the board, and so therefore we should entertain a motion to. Adjourned. Can I make a motion to adjourn? Seconded. Second. Made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you all. <laughs>